What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right. Welcome back. Season number three of Sentinels franchise is officially underway today. Boom, boom, boom. If you guys are fired up for another season, another fun season, hopefully, of St. Louis Sentinels franchise, please like the video, consider subscribing for weekly Madden 24 content, and thank you to everyone who kicked it with me on the off-season live stream the other day. I had so much fun. That was a very interesting off-season. We'll talk about that momentarily. The video is actually still in the Sentinels playlist. It's just... It's not edited or anything like that. It's just the live raw footage. But, you know, some people like it raw. So if, oh. if you want to go watch the raw footage, make sure to go check it out. So, like I said, interesting offseason. A lot to talk about. But before we do that, we have to set our season goal. Now, obviously, the season goal is to win the Super Bowl. That's every team's goal at the start of the offseason. But realistically speaking, I'm going to make our goal to make the playoffs. I don't necessarily know if this team got better in the offseason. Don't think that we got worse. I just think that we're a little bit different. So we're just going to make our goal to make the playoffs and hope for the best. Hopefully we can get off to a hot start with this new look Sentinels team. Media says it's opening day this week and a fresh start for every team around the league. And you'll be facing the Chargers. <laughs> What's the key to victory? I think that... Dominating offense is going to be the key to victory today. Ideally, we sta establish a rhythm on offense, dictate the flow of the game, and get a big enough lead to make their offense one-dimensional. Chargers will probably be tough, and I uh, don't know what I just clicked there. Something to do with passing, I guess, which is probably what I would have picked anyways. But I think the Chargers are going to be tough. They got Justin Herbert. They do not have Keenan Allen anymore. He went to the Texans in free agency. So the goal today is to beat the Chargers and throw for 350 plus passing yards. And I think that we're gonna need to get off to a hot start so far uh, to start this season out because something tells me, and I'll show you our kind of our financial situation here that we find ourselves in, but something tells me this might be our winning window right now. We only have 610K in cap space. So we literally have no money. That is because we are feeling the effects of a $50 million cap penalty right now. Yes, I'm aware I could go into the settings and clear the cap penalty, but I'm not going to do that. I'm trying to make this franchise as realistic as possible. So we got some guys coming up too. Not really sure how this is going to play out, but we have a, some key guys who are under contract for only this year. So Terry McLaurin, he's going to be in a contract year. Jonathan Allen going to be in a contract year. Our superstar kind of face of the defense, Kendall Fuller is going to be in a contract year. Brian Robinson, Jamin Davis. I mean, some really, really key guys, Damian Lewis. And we don't even have a full 53-man roster either. That's the thing. We only have 49 players, um, so hopefully we can even play this freaking game. I sure hope so, but I had to go shuffle some things around. I did not do any contract restructuring. I will do that as a last case, you know, last resort, last ditch effort if we absolutely need to sign somebody, but I had to cut some practice squad guys, bring in some other practice squad guys. Matter of fact, let me just show you guys the new look Sentinels. Again, don't know if we're better, don't think we're worse, but I just think that we're different. So I did bring in a fullback, Michael Burton, who ironically enough, he played for the Eagles. And I feel like he was kind of torching us when we played the Eagles in the playoffs. But of course, JJ Ford's here. No introduction needed. Dudley Saxton will get the starting nod over Brian Robinson, at least to start. And then we also brought in this fella right here, Dwight Jackson. We picked him up in, I want to say the fourth round, maybe I kind of just took a flyer on him. Turns out he's hidden development, six foot rookie out of UAB, the Blazer, 233 pounds. So maybe there's something here. Not really quite sure what I'm going to do with Brian Robinson as of yet. We'll see how the season goes, but Dwight Jackson for getting him in the fourth round. I mean, he looks pretty decent. He's got okay speed for a power back. He can break tackles. He's fairly strong. So hopefully with having that hidden development, maybe he can develop, be our second running back and maybe we ship off Brian Robinson. 
Darius Powell on the offensive line. This offensive line is looking okay. We could not uh, retain Sam Cosme, so Andrew Wiley kind of the weak spot, but we got Ricky Stromberg, our, our third-year man now, starting at the right guard spot. Will Devlin, the rookie, or now second-year man, excuse me, out of Michigan. He's a superstar. He's developing into a fine young lad. Damian Lewis, always stellar. And then Jarius Powell, could not believe we even got this guy. He looks to be possibly the future at the tackle position. We got him at the top of the second round, and he was just sitting there. He was projected to go round one. If you watch the stream, I, I about had a heart attack when I saw him still there. Didn't even expect to get him at all, but he's a rookie out of USC. Good size for a tackle, and he's not the best uh, pass blocker, it doesn't look like, but he's a decent run blocker, pretty strong. Core skills still kind of raw, but with, again, having that hidden development, that should help out tremendously and i think our offensive line is set receivers are good i mean we got receiver and corner probably the best uh position that we have on this team of course bart burns now a superstar player as well logan thomas is here as our secondary option but he's starting to get kind of old uh but brew or bart jumped up to superstar because he won the offensive rookie of the year and I gave him what I think could be a pretty deadly combination. I gave him tank and jukebox, so he'll have steerable juke animations. And anybody who tries to throw a hit stick on my man, they may just be bouncing right off of him. So I think that's kind of interesting to have jukebox and tank equipped at the same time. Defensively, our secondary is just is set. We got Kendall Fuller. We got Emmanuel Forbes, two superstars on the boundaries. We got Quan Martin, superstar free safety. Only got one free safety, though. And of course, Cam Curl. And this guy right here, Tony Hoover, our number one pick in the draft. Picked him at number 10, traded up with the Green Bay Packers to get him. Did not think that I would be able to orchestrate that trade. I kind of gave up a little bit of draft equity for next year, but I think it's going to be worth it. But Tony Hoover, he's amazing already. 78 overall, playing up to uh, 80 with the temporary boost. And uh, very fast, 94 speed, 95 excel. He can jump. He can play both man and zone. And of course, having that hidden development, he's going to develop that much faster. So our corners are, our secondary is set. Secondary is pretty much amazing, I would say. Has to be one of the best in the league. Linebackers, I mean, they're pretty good. Hayward, now second year pro out of Miami. Jamin Davis and then Cody Barton. Always stellar on the inside. Did pick up uh, Trovon Wiley. He's a normal development linebacker. Got him in the sixth round. And then we really need to find somebody to, to play the right side opposite Chase Young. I mean, Dante Fowler, he'll do for now but he's not really a long-term piece. Jonathan Allen, who again, I mentioned he's under contract. So we're going to have to pay some guys next year. And we ain't got no quiche apparently, but this guy right here, Glenn, Glenn may not sure what to think about him. Got him in the third round rookie out of Washington, 355 pounds. He's a big old boy, but only normal development. I was a little upset about that core skills look a little bit raw, but he is very strong at 95. So, like I said, I mean, comment below what you guys think of the team. I don't think we're necessarily better or worse, but we got something going here and we look to be some competitors here in season number three. Set our national scout to look at defensive end and linebacker again. Got to make it a big priority to get somebody rushing opposite side of Chase Young on that defense. Never hurts to have extra depth at linebacker either. Our tier two scout, got to have a backup tight end to Bart Burns. I mean, Logan Thomas is here, but he's getting old and he's getting worse. And I put safety. I wanted safety as well because we only really have one free safety. And then aside from that, I kind of doubled down on the tight end receiver, whatever. It'll be nice to get right now. We got a practice squad guy and a tight end as our fifth and sixth option. And then just kind of doubled down on offensive line as well, because again, we got to get better in that department so opening game today we're going to be going down to sofi to take on justin herbert and the la chargers don't think it's going to be an easy task uh chargers always have good offense the only saving grace is austin eckler's not here we know he's with philadelphia from playing them in the playoffs and also keenan allen's not here but i would still say that defending the deep pass should probably be our primary focus and then we are going to go, I want to go outside run because that helped us so much with Dudley. We're going to start out though going blitz counter because they do got 
obviously this man right here joey bosa and a pretty good you know front seven so i think that that's probably going to be where we start and as far as our game plan i think that jj ford's going to have to show up and show out in this game and just please let the chargers score less than 30 points teams don't really tend to do that on us too much but I feel like if we get into a shootout with the Chargers today, could spell bad news. Okay, look at our number one pick here, Tony Hoover, rookie out of Washington. I'm really excited about this guy. I said in the live stream that I thought he was going to be the best player in the class. Turns out he was tied for the second, but still, and I should have had that pick there, completely mistimed it. So that one is definitely not on Hoover. That one is on me for sure. But yeah, I said that he could be, there's a nice pick from Tony. I said that he would probably be the best player in the draft and he was tied for second. So I really wasn't too far off there. Get a nice coverage sack with some good man coverage there by Hoover and uh, having Kendall Fuller, Emmanuel Forbes, and now Hoover as well. I think that that could be a deadly combination. One pick to get gold and we're not going to get it on these little drag routes. I hate these drag routes or maybe if we can get a coverage sack. Nope. We'll settle with silver. I mean, it's cool. I don't like to really restart these ones too much, but looking at Tony Hoover, I mean, he looks pretty good. Wow, defensive tackle Glenn May is so slow. I mean, he's 300 plus pounds, so what do you expect? But I'm used to doing these uh, trench battle mini games with linebackers and not defensive tackles, and I'm definitely feeling the difference here as Glenn May is, he's not the, he's not the fastest chap out there, but... Hey, I think that, uh, you know, we got we had to have somebody to play uh, to play alongside Jonathan Allen in our four, three sets. And I think we were playing like Ridgeway or somebody like that. So I think it was still a good pickup. Normal development. Not sure how quick that he'll develop, but tell you what, a dev up, a dev upgrade in practice or something like that to help him along the way. I would certainly take that. Will we get lucky and get a dev trade upgrade with Glenn May? We do not. <laughs> So, all right, taking on a tough opponent here in week one, LA Chargers, they're 84 rated overall and we're 83 rated overall. So got our work cut out for us here to start this young campaign. But if you guys are fired up for another season of St. Louis Sentinels franchise, please like the video, consider subscribing. I'm trying to hit 1000 subs so I can start making a little bit of quiche on these videos and share it with your friends. If you love football, Madden content, I'm telling you, you're in the right place. So without further ado, guys, Monday night prime time. Hold on. Got to get a nice little screenshot of that. Monday night primetime in SoFi Stadium. Let's get down there and get ready for the game. Looks to be a beautiful day in sunny SoFi. Also a beautiful day and sunny here, as you could probably see on my face cam. Used to recording at nighttime, but today I'm recording midday and the sun is beaming in through my office. So it uh, looks like Brandon Staley there on the sideline. No Jim Harbaugh in this one. And I'll tell you what, if you're a Chargers fan, you guys, you guys have, you guys have all the pieces in play. I really feel like it was definitely the coaching situation that was holding the Chargers back because they got all the pieces and now apparently they might have a coach. So Herbert going to start out pistol here with Spiller in the backfield, almost okay. got to Herbert there and we cannot wrap up the wide receiver. Joshua Palmer should have had him for no game, but instead he picks up 10 and uh, yeah, the Chargers don't have Eckler anymore remember he went to the eagles so they have isaiah spiller and they have tyler algier so algier in the backfield again herbert coming out shotgun and we'll see where he decides to go he is going to check it down we cannot tackle receivers so far on these couple plays here checking it down to quentin johnston for a nice gain of five second and five here let's use sir jonathan allen i did give him a el toro superstar ability hopefully that can help and no coverage there what is going on with these receivers man oh my god quentin johnston why are receivers getting so open already it makes no sense to me i mean i know the chargers are good but giddily gosh dang it man it should not be that hard to put a body on a receiver and play him in the middle of the field but apparently it is herbert goes down that is our rookie Glenn May. Yes, thank you so much. Our rookie Glenn May out of Washington. Drafted a couple Washington Huskies in this uh, previous draft. And May does get to Herbert. 
which is great to see because we needed we needed to stop the Chargers. They were oh pick city no. Just gonna be a nice completion there to Mike Williams. Play a little man coverage here. Man up. Herbert's got three wide receivers on the left side over there. So let's see where he wants to go. He's gonna roll out. Somebody crash. Oh my god. Wide open there is Joshua Palmer. About sick of calling his name already. His momentum kind of carried him out of the end zone, but. The Chargers get the ball all the way to the three, and uh, we are not, defense not playing good to start this one out. Somebody crashed on Algier. We are going to get there with Benjamin St. Juice and hold him to a third in inches. Now, hopefully they come out zero wide receivers. They will not, although I might still go 60 out jacks blitz in this situation. May not be the best thing to call, but... I'm going to do it anyways, hoping it's a handoff to Algier. It is going to be a handoff to Algier, and he is met in the backfield there by Cody Barton and also Milo Eifler, and we'll see if that brings in the field goal unit. Brandon Staley, we know he's aggressive. Look, I'm going 60 out Jack splits right. again. I don't care. It's I formation, so this could easily be a run to Algier again, although Herbert is changing the play at the line. Can somebody get back there? It is going to be Algier, and we... Did we... St oh, my God, dude. We were this close to stopping Algier, but he fought forward, and <laughs> what do you do now at the one-yard line? I mean, we're just going to continue going 60 out Jacks Blitz, but that was our chance right there. It's going to be an outside pitch to Algier. Algier is going to get in. It's okay. Not a good drive for our defense. Chargers marched down the field with relative ease. Did not have an answer for their passing game. Almost had a goal line stand there at the end. But the fourth down play proves to be effective. Chargers draw first blood. Get a look at J.J. Ford up to a 90 overall. And it said aggressive decision making on there, which we know uh, J.J. Ford is very aggressive. He led the league in interceptions, of course. But he also had 5,000 passing yards. And if Bart Burns didn't get rookie of the year, Probably would have been Ford that got it. We actually got uh, Brian Robinson in here, not Dudley Saxton. I did work Brian into a few sets. So let's see if Brian can get the outside edge here. Pick up a nice gain to start this one out. He's not gonna because Logan Thomas can't hold a block. And we're gonna lose five yards on our opening carry of the game. Our play art is already going away. Is that what's happening here? I don't like that one bit. Let's see who can get open. Hopefully it's Terry. What the fuck? On the outside, and it's just going to be nearly picked off there by J.C. Jackson. We find ourselves in third and long already. So this game is starting out just absolutely wonderfully, guys. Really happy with the performance. Uh, why? What's my? I swear my buttons or something are messed up. Come on, Terry, pick that up, Terry. There we go. Ice in the veins. Oh my God, did we need that? Because that drive was headed for disaster. Terry is the St. Louis savior. And he just essentially saved our drive on that one. Maybe it's this lighting getting in my eyes here on the face cam. I don't know. Dudley. Okay. Nice blocking for Dudley. Dudley picks up nine. Dudley is, you know, I don't, I think it's the right decision to put Dudley as our starter. I feel like he definitely earned it. Although as I say that, here's Brian Robinson back in for this set here. A little RPO action we're gonna give it to robinson robinson has room up the middle picking up exactly what he needed moving the chains getting the ball to the 46. ford and the boys coming out shotgun here gonna be a rollout so i might be looking for scary terry if he could get yeah he couldn't get past the coverage and a linebacker ricky stromberg goes down so that is not good to see at all if you are a sentinels fan which i really hope that you guys are at this point um, because we don't have that many offensive linemen so hopefully Ricky can come back second and ten here let's see who can get open on these routes might be Terry on a slant and man I'll tell you what Chargers coverage looking really really good not even in field goal range either so we uh, kind of just need to <laughs> to pick this one up here let's see who can get open hoping it's Curtis Samuel on the comeback route Curtis does pick it up fourth and inches and I mean in this situation, Ricky will come back. That's good. I feel like we're already in a situation where we we kind of have to go for it, right? Maybe should we go QB sneak? At least see what they uh, 
what, what formation, what set they come out in. Maybe a QB sneak can get this done. I don't know. We'll see what the middle, the middle of that uh, defensive line looks like. I mean, it's wide open for the taking. Easy money from JJ Ford. Clutch conversion as we keep this drive alive. So Terry is getting pressed pretty heavy there, depending on what that safety does um i don't like what he's doing but i like bart burns open but we did not have enough protection somebody got to us there i think it was jalen bayer who also got injured you saw me jump out of my seat bart was was open if i had just a split second longer to throw it to him i mean look bart was open right there maybe could uh let's see where i was. okay so right okay i mean right there's where i see him Right there is where I release, and pretty much we had no time. So, I mean, that was the, the best case scenario, and it still didn't work. We got to go PA cross, single back X bunch nasty here. I know it's a little early to pull this once per play, once per game play out of the bag of tricks, but we got to get something moving. Let's see if we can get some protection this time so some of these routes can possibly get open. There's Curtis. JJ Ford almost led him too far as well, but Curtis just did a weird teleport animation on his Abra-ish. See if Dudley can get a good block to the outside. He has room. Can he outrun the defender? He tried. He was so close. Chris Barnes caught up to him. I thought Dudley was going to be dancing in the end zone there for six momentarily. I kind of like Terry. If I had more time, which I don't, I might have audibled Terry, and that's going to be a holding on the Sentinels probably. Going to move this thing back, I would presume. Holding. And it is. Who's the culprit? Cooper is Damian Lewis. Good looking out, buddy. Seems like a good time for a screen here. It's second and 13, so we're behind the sticks. Got to get this ball off quick. We did get it off quick, and Ricky Stromberg just did not even attempt to set a block, so that is very unfortunate. Coach is saying verticals, as you see on the screen, and I don't uh, necessarily disagree with that. So maybe somebody can get open here. How about we just streak Curtis Samuel? Terry might be... We have more receivers on the outside than the chargers have defenders but that means absolutely nothing in madden and i'm just taking a shot for samuel and he actually had it in his grasp and dropped it someone just tripped jj ford curtis samuel actually had it but ended up dropping it look at that i mean could not be better ball placement not sure if he would have been in bounds anyways i don't think he would have but he did drop it, and, you know, we're going to have to settle for a field goal on our opening drive. That was a nice, long, methodical drive. I will say that. But there was a couple times where we were faced with third and long, and just the offense seemed tough. Maybe it's the Chargers defense. Maybe it's me. But I'll tell you what, our defense didn't do nothing on the first drive, so we're going to have to wake up, smell the smelling salts, and play some D on Justin Herbert. So Herbert going to be single back again. Changing the play at the line. He's going to go back to Algier. This time, we have some Sentinels there to meet him on the edge. Only picking up a couple. And this is going to bring up a key, key third and one. And I think this is pressure time. I really do. We're going to go pressure. Not convinced this won't even be necessarily a run to Algier. I could definitely see that being the case. It is. And Algier has all the blocks in the world. Wish we could get those on our inside runs. That would be nice. Chargers move the chains again. This is any omen to what the rest of this game is going to look like. I should have bought extra Vaseline tonight at the good old convenience store because I feel like we are going to need them. So here we go now. And that's going to be a nice catch and completion to the tight end divine. First round pick Chargers and Herbert get it to the 34. So tell me, maybe this is just me. I'm not sure. This could, this could definitely be just me but i feel like teams play so much better first couple games of the season now i realize there's no stamina no fatigue but i mean people are just running like like look at that look at that why in the world would it take seven people to bring down joshua palmer it's it's joshua palmer he's not that good if we don't get some gosh dang pressure here i swear man we need some sacks on herbert and that is just gonna be divine like Look at that, man. Impossible window. Jermaine Devine, the rookie, makes an impossible catch. And welcome to the first game 
of season number three of Sentinel's franchise. It's gonna be outside run to Dudley again, and Dudley does have some space. Can he juke somebody? He kind of does. And now McLaurin gets gets injured. So that is the last thing I want to see. Injuries were a problem towards the end of last season. We caught the injury bug there at the worst possible time. And it's looking like they, they might be a problem here. We're going to go Dudley again. Dudley getting exactly what he needed to move the chains. But no McLaurin. We saw who else went down so far. And he's not even going to come back. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Not good, my friends. Not good at all. Terry's injured. I can't see my play art. The screen's shaking. Chargers are doing whatever the heck that they want to. Curtis Samuel is open, and I can't... <laughs> I can't touch pass it. Let's bring in Brian Robinson. Brian, you want to earn your keep around here, brother? You're not in, uh, you know, that many sets these days. Pick us up a first down when we need it. Can you do that? Brian does. Let's go screen pass to Dudley here. Just something. And what are we doing, guys? What are we actually doing? Another third and ten. We just cannot move the ball at all. Oh, God. It's wide open. Throw an accurate pass. Thank you, JJ Ford. My God. George Williams gets that, the two-year man now out of Wisconsin. Prior to that, I was thinking to myself, like, man, we just, we cannot move the ball at all. And I don't know necessarily what's going on, but wasn't looking too good. But that was definitely much needed. Now, we're going to bring in Dudley here again. Also, this lineman, I think that's Sam Hubbard, former uh, Bengal. He's looking a little gassed out there already. And it's too early for you to be gassed. Doesn't matter because Dudley was only able to pick up one. Okay, guys, this is a crucial, crucial one indeed. Dudley, I need you to run a wheel. I think that sounds like a good idea. Still can't even see my play art really, but I see a receiver there, Jahan Dotson with the clutch catch. And we led that thing beautifully. JJ Ford starting to put it together now. Seven for 15, over 100 yards. Ball is on the 15 here. We're going to go draw play to Saxon and just no blocking at all. Chargers back to full momentum now, man. I really don't want to settle for a field goal if I don't have to. So please, if we can find a way to, so far protection, and I, I mentioned offensive line was our, our biggest need for sure. But I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. We have, we have minimal time. To get the ball out here so who is going to get open that is george williams breaks a tackle the big six foot nine man breaks a tackle and dives into the end zone very well done from george he was stopped definitely short of the line to gain i'm going to say about three or so yards oh yeah he was stopped short but shakes the would-be tackler of the free safety dives into the end zone and that is exactly what the st louis sentinels needed as things were starting to get Things were starting to get a little bleak. Things were starting to get a little dismal. We still got to somehow find a way to play defense because the last thing we want is for Herbert and the Chargers to potentially double dip. That would be that, that could be ball game if that happens. But we can somehow play some defense here, get the ball back, keep it a one score game or possibly take the lead. We'll have a shot in the second half and we're going to guess pass and we're going to shade inside because that is where, just like always, I sound like a freaking broken record see what did i say there we go there we go right in the middle of the field herbert is yet to throw an incomplete pass 10 for 10 i knew he was going to be good in this game but my god i didn't think he was going to be that good so maybe we just i think we have to play play man defense right let's also show blitz not going to be a blitz but let's try to fool him a little bit possibly oh need a pick there that's our rookie hoover terrible position and he just got owned there by Quentin Johnston. We got Quentin Johnston and Joshua Palmer looking like looking like Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel, how they should be looking. And it's just it's just bad right now uh, for our defense. Defense is not playing well at all. Can we finally do something? No, we cannot. There is Hoover on the stop. I guess pass and shade inside again here. Herbert has the ball on the 16-yard line. There's the pick we needed. Who else? It's Kendall Fuller, and he might house this. He might house this. Wait a second. Wait a second. Do you guys hear that? Hello? House call, baby. That is what I'm talking about. Kendall Fuller. He 
did that numerous times, numerous times last season. And just when I was, uh, you know, about to ridicule the defense, Kendall Fuller jumps the route of Joshua Palmer, does it beautifully too, might I add. He's reading it the whole way, reading the eyes of Herbert, jumps right in the passing lane. Herbert was was running. I thought he was going to catch us there for a minute. Kendall Fuller somersaults into the end zone. And I mean, how clutch was that? How absolutely clutch was that? Because the Chargers were looking like they were going to score before halftime, get the ball back and potentially double dip. And that would have been no bueno. Wow. Roller coaster ride of emotions. Sentinels are going to go into the locker room up three, which I didn't think was going to happen at all. Haven't been able to find that spark rushing. And I think that I actually am going to go to run outside as our game plan because we know that Dudley likes to eat in those situations. And as far as the Chargers, they've carved us up. They've carved us up in the medium pass. So we're going to shift our focus to defend the medium pass. Oh my God, I was mistaken. The Chargers, yeah, that's right. The Chargers got the ball back. What game am I watching here? So now we get a chance to double dip. How about that? I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking, but you know what? I'm glad I thought wrong because now we have a chance to take a pretty sizable lead here and we really need to do that. Chargers, okay, don't have momentum anymore, so that's good. Let's see what we can make happen on our initial drive. Curtis Samuels getting open, has room to run as well. And remember, Terry is not here. Hopefully, it's just a, you know, one game injury or something like that. But Curtis Samuel is going to be the guy. But let's see if making our focus run outside. The blocking should be a little bit better. I hope it is. My controller is also messing up too. And I can't shift over to the left side like I want to. God dang it. My PS5 controller is messing up. Just the, just the time to do that. The right analog stick is messing up on my PS5 controller. Yeah, it's just all going to the right. Bruh. So that is just lovely. Didn't think I was going to have to budget for a new PS5 controller. We're going TE attack here on third and nine. JJ Ford also has his X factor activated and I see our tight end getting open. There's Bart Burns. How about those steer steerable juke animations that I equipped on him? Uh, didn't really get a chance to show him off there, but how about that? Oh man, big gainer to Bart Burns, your reigning offensive rookie of the year. And that couldn't have come at a more clutch time. I got to be honest with you. We really needed that. Going to go back to our game plan, though, and see if I can switch it over. That Okay, there we go. Now I was able to switch it over to the left side. You guys got to believe me. I'm not making this stuff up. My controller was messing up here. So let's see if Dudley can get some good blocks. This time he does. That's why I like changing that focus to run outside because the blocks get exponentially better. All play to Dudley up the gut here on second and two. I like the sound of that. Dudley breaks free for a moment. He's met there by Joey Bosa, but Dudley now up to 10 rushes for 44 yards. So that is a good start for the old Saxtonator. And why, why go away from him? Let's see if we can continue to pound this ball outside, pick up some good positive yardage. Also, I don't know why Sam Hubbard is so tired. But he is huffing and puffing over there. Dudley with some nice blocks, but the free safety came in to meet us and only able to pick up four on that one. We're going to roll out here out of shotgun. Going to be a play fake looking for maybe back corner of the end zone. Curtis Samuel, he catches it and he holds on to it. Yes. Okay, so no Terry McLaurin, no problem? Question mark? I don't know. I mean, Curtis Samuel is, he was a 1,000 yard receiver last season. So we know he can definitely do his thing. And JC Jackson was not able to keep up with him. And we go up by 10. And I cannot believe that I thought the Chargers were going to get the ball to start halftime. But you know what? It is what it is. We're up by 10. Let's get another pick six or something from Kendall Fuller. Got to guard the middle of the field here, man. The middle of the field. Isaiah Spiller is now in. And what did I say? It's the middle of the field. This tight end, Divine. Jermaine Devine, he is looking mighty divine, if I do say so myself, playing very good. And I think he was only, when I checked, I did a little bit of checking of the roster before this game. I want to say he was only normal development, like a 71 overall or something like that. And wide open is divine again. 
making our DBs look foolish out there as Herbert's only incompletion so far was that interception. Man up here again, Herbert coming out of the shotgun, got Algier behind him. It's going to be a check down to Algier and Kendall Fuller and Jamin Davis was there to meet him for actually a loss of two on the play. So defense playing a little bit better than they did initially. I'm not sold on anything quite yet. Let's guess pass here in this situation. Got to figure it's going to be a pass. I need Jonathan Allen to get back there and dangerous pass, but it is caught and completed there by Quentin Johnston. But that's going to bring up third and five. So does our defense have what it takes to get these Chargers to hopefully kick a field goal? I'm not sure. We're going to find out here. Isaiah Spiller back there. Bunch to the right as well. And that's the middle of the field. Like I always say every freaking episode. Oh. Nothing else on this drive. Chargers at least aren't, you know, carving us up with the big play. Now there's Algier again. Again, got to watch the run to the right. Don't. It is the run to the right. Can Chase Young get off his blocks? He cannot. I called it. I'm like freaking Tony Romo in the announcer's booth there. I knew. I just knew. And Chase Young got sucked into a block there. Couldn't do anything. Algier going to score and bring the Chargers to within three. Curtis Samuel playing really good. Four receptions, eight targets. I know he has a couple drops in there as well. So definitely want to see that get cleaned up. But so far, all things considered, he's playing really good. And I, you know, you just hope that uh, Terry McLaurin is not out for any sizable length of time. But of course, you never know. And that's a bad pass by me. Shouldn't have thrown it. Oh, my God. Luckily, that was a defensive end out there. Or that would have been a pick six probably for the Chargers. Coming out, I here might have Samuel in the middle or possibly Bart Burns on the outside. And just almost got sacked there. Had to throw out of the sack, and just like that, we are kind of, well, no, we are pretty much giving the momentum to the Chargers here, and what do we have? See, my con my controller, man, you, I know you guys saw it flashing there just now. It's not good. Dudley on a wheel. We're going to do it. Maybe a drag or something in the middle of the field, and that's going to be a sack and a fumble for J.J. Ford, scooped up by Tui Tua Peloto. And just like that, the Chargers, you don't see Ford fumble it too much. You don't see Ford get sacked too much, at least not last year. But I'll tell you what, so far in this game, pressure is hot and heavy. I think we're going to go screen pass to Dudley here. Just got to get something safe, a nice safe completion. Dudley does catch it, looking for some blocks. He had him for a moment, able to pick up seven, which I guess is pretty good. That's going to bring up a key third down. Curtis on a slant. I like that. He's matched up in single coverage here. Can we pick this up? That is the question. Ah, uh, God, I don't like anything, man. The coverage was so great. The coverage was so great. I didn't see anybody open. And I just kept dropping back, dropping back, dropping back. Did I miss anything here? I don't think so. Curtis on a slant. He's covered. We had Logan Thomas on a drag. He's covered. Bart Burns never gets open. Yeah, I mean, that... It was just great coverage by the Chargers. And <laughs> yep, this is this is what welcome to St. Louis Sentinels football. If you're new, here's what we do. We play like crap in the second half. Happens so frequently. Don't know why. Haven't been able to figure that one out yet. And Chargers, after a terrible punt by me, gonna get the ball basically at midfield. See what Herbert does here. I just I need somebody to get to get in the backfield. Can that possibly happen? Okay, Hayward again. So calling his name on back-to-back -back plays. That may take us to the end of the third. We'll see if Herbert snaps his ball. He does not have to. He probably won't, and he won't. So it's four-point ball game. 28-24 is your score. Chargers, I would say, have outplayed us. Only thing is they had that – Herbert had that one pick six to Kendall Fuller that really changed the tide of this game. But this is gonna be um this is gonna be a, a must stop situation. We have to find a way to get them off of the field here. And it's third and thirteen, so you would think that we would be able to Herbert, and that's I'm I'm so I'm so I hate this game. I hate this game so much. It's always the middle of the field. Every single time. Not even gonna go to replay on that one. It is the middle of the field every time. And we had pressure on Herbert. He had to roll out. 
And at the very last second, he found a receiver breaking to the inside. We can never stop a team on third and long. And uh, there's a nice sack, though, by how about Glenn May? Two sacks in his inaugural NFL debut. I'm going dime blitz here. Herbert's coming out of the pistol, so this could still be a run. How about some pressure? Get somebody out there, please. And I don't know how, how the receiver Quentin Johnson possibly hung on to that. He has seven receptions for 119 yards. I mean, come on, man. We're going pressure all day, every day. Can somebody please get to Algier? We had a chance. We had a chance to get Algier in the backfield. Chargers making plays today. All right, it's going to be a run to Algier. There to meet him again. Chase Young stops him. So can we finally get the... We, I don't think we have a singular third down stop in this one. I'm, I'm going pressure. I don't care. I have to. I have to go pressure. It's the only thing I feel like will work. Chase Young going to drop out in coverage. And uh, there we go. Somebody. Oh, my God. Just somebody put your hands up. Herbert threw it into traffic. If any Sentinel would have just put their hands up on that one, it would have been probably a deflected pass. But, you know, I feel like uh, Madden Madden has decided that the Chargers are going to win this game. And that is something that Madden does. Tyler Algier actually not going to get it. Stopped at the one. So maybe uh, zero wide receivers. Okay. I mean, I'll go 60 out Jack's blitz if you want me to. I'm feeling frisky today. Come on. Fullback dive up the middle or Algier run up the middle. Please. That's going to be a false start. So that is going to back the Chargers up five yards. We have to hold them to a field goal. And if we don't hold them to a field goal, I, I don't so know. It's going to be very, very difficult for us to come back from that. And I can't even see my play art because it is distorted again. Justin Hayward, you get back there. I mean, just an all-star level catch by Williams. That was great coverage by Forbes, too. But just, I mean, Mike Williams is an all-star. Don't get me wrong. But just all-star coverage by him. Chargers going to take an 11-point victory. And this is the point in the ball game where I start launching picks. Trying to play hero ball. Is that going to happen today? I don't know. But this is where it typically happens. Coach says PA cross. I like it. I like it a lot. Let's see if it works. It's not the single back X punch nasty. But going to have to have some protection, which has been fairly tough to come by these this game. Nice catch there by George Williams. And he gets hurt. My God, man. I just can't catch a freaking break today. That one looks tough. That one looks painful, too. And who do we have now at receiver behind Jahan Dotson? It was a, it's a practice squad guy. Can't even remember his name. Something, Joiner, something or other. Um, touch pass? Nope, it's a pick. This is the point in the ball game where I start launching picks. <laughs> Sante Samuel gets it, and I, I said this is the point in the game where I start launching picks, and it's ex literally exactly what happened there. Not saying it's over, but I think this is going to be a tough one for the Sentinels. Herbert and the Chargers just outplayed us in this one. They are outplaying us. As you can see, only two incomplete passes, way over 300 yards. And we just really have no answer for him. Had a couple times where it was, it was close, but that pick there might have just sealed the deal. Unless our defense decides to get just an outstanding, another pick six or something like that. But I think we're probably going to need it. Nope. It's just going to be a leak to the fullback there on the outside. Chargers still moving. Justin Herbert, I wasn't even talking. So I probably didn't even catch it. Or I don't know. Maybe I'll keep it in here. Just had the, the most uh, Lamar Jackson-like design run. That he has no business doing. And the Chargers going to put up a 40 piece on us. I mean, look, I'm definitely going to try to score. Keep this game, keep the scoreboard a little bit more respectable. But inverted score here, 24-42. And it's looking like your St. Louis Sentinels. But we dropped, I think we, we started out sketchy last season as well. And you see, we made it to within one game of the Super Bowl. So one game doesn't mean anything, but... Uh, a lot of things I didn't like in this one. We'll play action leak. See if our uh, good old tight end there, Bart Burns, can get open. Uh, I mean, what? A dropped pass. 
Lots of, I got to check the drops after this one. Lots of dropped passes. So, I mean, I don't, it's already difficult enough when your team is not playing the best. But then you add some drop passes like that in the mix. What are you really supposed to do? That's just a terrible pass by me. I led him the complete wrong way. Next game will be better. 42-24. Next game will be better. I'm having some issues. Like, I already lost audio on my headphones once. I'm looking at it right now. It's not even picking up the PS5 audio. So I'm going to have to edit something in there. My PS5 control. I Look, I'm not making excuses. I played like crap. Especially that second half. But... My PS5 controller is messing up a little bit, losing some audio on my headphones. I don't know, man. Uh, not the way that I wanted to start the St. Louis Sentinels season number three. But next game will be better. Herbert goes for 330, two touchdowns and a pick. And J.J. Ford, 204 yards, 48% completion. Also two touchdowns and a pick. Tyler Algier killed it. Dudley Saxon did not. So, okay, Dudley. Need you to be the guy that you were last season. Terry McLaurin left early. He had uh, one reception, that key third down reception, and then he left. And aside from, you know, Curtis Samuel had an okay game, George Williams. We might also have some players hurt, too. And we did get a couple sacks. Glenn May, the rookie, with two. That I do like to see. And then also Kendall Fuller with that key pick. And then also Asante Samuel had that pick as well. So... Not a whole lot to take away from that game. I mean, a couple things, I guess, if you're really reaching and grasping for straws. So like I said, next game will be better. And Glenn May gets a well-deserved upgrade. I We're going to go Power Rusher just because uh, he got two sacks in that game. I want him to be a little bit more well-rounded. He's probably a run stopper. I press X on my controller and nothing's even happening. So like, what's going on here, guys? What is going on? This is the worst episode recording-wise ever. Plus two to power moves, awesome. Also gets plus one to block shedding, does not go up overall. But the question is, did we lose anybody? Okay, thank God. No key injuries. Talk to one of our leaders about the game. It wasn't a good one. 42-24, tough way. Starts your season. We should have gotten the win this week. Well, yeah, Terry. I wish you would have been out on the field. I let the guys know that we have to be better and that winning is the only option. Well, we need you to be healthy, Terry. If we're going to speak that into existence. So starting out the season 0-1 here, guys. Week 2 against the Philadelphia Eagles, who, as good as they are, we have had their number in the past. So hoping that next week will be a uh, first dub of the season. But that is going to do it for me tonight. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.